Hi, everybody. Welcome to your C++ e-learning platform where we aim at teaching you how to program in C++ using the step-by-step do-it-yourself approach. Uh, I'm IK in team, your tutor on this platform. Today, we are continuing with the um, loops that we started. And today's lecture um, seeks to introduce you to the while loop and the do while loop in C++. We've already done the uh, for loop. So today we'll be looking at the while and the do while loop. And we will also be implementing the do and the while loop um, in C++ with some examples. We hope that by the end of the tutorial, you'll be able to implement um, the while loop and the do while loop yourself in C++. So let's move on. So um, we're looking at the while loop first. A while loop statement repeatedly executes a target statement as long as a given condition is true. So we use the while loop. Okay, so while there's a visitor in your house, keep on entertaining the visitor. So as long as this, the visitor is in the house, you keep on entertaining. So the while loop keeps on executing as long as the condition is true. So if we look at the flow diagram, we have a condition. So we have the condition here. So if the condition is true, then it's a true statement. So then we execute a code block. So then we go again and check if the condition is true, then we execute a code block. So as long as this condition remains true, this code block here will be executed. But if the condition is false, we exit the loop. Okay, so let's look at the syntax, the syntax of the while loop. The syntax of the while loop is what we have here. Um, we have the keyword while, which is an English word. We have open bracket, then the condition that we are testing. We close the condition, then open curl bracket. We have the statement here. Then we have what? Close curl bracket. So while the visitor is in the room, then the condition keep on entertaining the visitor or give the visitor a drink. So while his age is not 18, then he can vote. So if you have 15, you go to 17 unless you get to 18. So while, so as long as the condition is true, then the statement here will be executed, right? So um, we are saying that here, statement may be a single statement or a block of statement. We can put so many statements in the while loop um, code block. So this is the code block. This is what we are saying here. There can be so many statements here. You can put so many statements here if you like. And you can also put a single statement. So the number of statements here is not restricted. Okay. Then uh, we say the condition may be any expression and true is any non-zero value. The loop interprets while the condition, the loop I trade, sorry, the loop I trade while the condition is true. So the, as I said, the loop keeps on iterating as long as the condition remains what true. When the condition becomes false, program control passes to the line immediately following the loop. So when it is false, then as we look at the first block here, the structure, when it is false, it will be executed to this line, right? Okay, so let's see an example here. So we have, um, we have a, a question here. Then uh, we have an integer that we have declared it to uh, 10. So we have int 10 here. And then we we initialize a, which is an integer a, we initialize it to, to 10. Then we say while a is less than 20, c out value of a is a. What is happening here? a plus plus here. Now, so initial value of a is what 10. So the loop will check. Is 10 less than 20? Right, it's less than 20. So it prints out the value of a is what 10. 
then what is this one a is now equal to what a plus 1 so add 1 to a so a now becomes 11 it's 11 less than 10 yes it does the printing so it will keep on iterating as long as this condition remains true but immediately it gets to 20 20 is not less than 20 right so the loop will not be executed it will go out of the loop so if you execute this you will realize that this will be the app we're going to get 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 because all these values are less than what 20 right okay so let's see another example so write a c plus plus program that uses a while loop to add five numbers your program should prompt the user to enter these five numbers one after the other so enter number one enter number two enter number four remember we have used the for loop to implement this question before so how do we do this with the while loop so now we have what our uh, int total here that is going to keep the total numbers remember we're doing addition then we have the counter that's going to count for um the the current that's going to know the number that the person the current number then the, the or the current integer then we have what the counter that is counting the uh, number of what loops uh, the number of iterations we've done so we have total we say total is equal to what zero so here i declare the total and i came initialize it here and the same thing i declare the counter came up of course you can do the initialization also here remember we've done such before so we say while counter is less or equal to what five because we are starting from what one so we go to two we go to a three we go to what four we go to what five so as a while counter is less or equal to five so it will start from one and up to five so while counter is less or equal to five we say c out enter number counter so the value of counter will be one so here enter number one and then we use c in current so as it enters we pick the, that number as the current number and then we say total is equal to what total plus current remember we said total is equal to total plus current can be expressed this way in our previous tutorials and then here we increase the counter by one right so we go here again and then the counter now becomes two so it's two less or equal to five and it's less so it comes enter number two and like that so as we pick in and then we are summing them so here we say the grand total is equal to a total then we pause um this is then pause i think this is the first time i'm introducing normally when you are running the compiler on your machine the the when the results is displayed you realize that the screen becomes stable for you to press the next key but then when you build the app and you are picking it to another machine if you don't put in this system pause here when the user runs the application the screen will just pop up and go and close so the user might not see the actual result that's the essence of this system pause here okay so let's see another example uh, i'm using this example because of my background in electrical so don't get confused and uh, those of you who have done fixes before if you have done fixes you realize that in fixes uh, we have resistors position of to the flow of current and they say resistors can be connected in series and in power now this is what happens if let's say we have two of these resistors in para so let's take these two resistors in para here so we have these two resistors in para right so this is r1 and this is r2 right good we have r1 r2 now they are saying that if we have two resistors in para to get a total resistance that is rt they say rt um they say one over rt is equal to one over what r1 plus one over r1 r2 sorry so uh that is what they say they say um the total one over the total resistance is equal to one over r1 plus one over r2 so if we have this formula there so if we have thousands of them then it's going to be uh one over rt that is the total here uh, is equal to one over r1 plus one over r2 plus one over r3 up to rn the number of resistance in para 
So uh, suppose we have two resistors in para, that is 400 and 200, and we are using this formula. Then it means that 1 over RT here will be equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So we have 1 over RT here to be equal to what? 1 over 400 plus 1 over 200, which will give us 300 over 400. So to get R, we to get RT, we find that we find the reciprocal of this and so that becomes what 400 over 3 so basically this is what they do with the number of resistors you keep on adding them one over the taking the reciprocal of those resistors you sum them together and then you take the reciprocal of the final answer we are programmers we are we don't want to go through this manually so the task is to write a c plus plus program that will find the value of number of resistors in para where we are not going through to do the calculation ourselves so with this formula idea, it's a, we're going to use the while loop so that we have to know the number of resistors and then we implement them with the while loop and then we find the total resistance. There are so many ways to do it. I'll show you one and then the other ones might follow. Okay, so let's see what happens now. So here we have the total resistance here. We initialize it to zero. We have the resistance, that's the value of this uh, resistance, this one, this uh, R1 and R2, those values, that's what we, we are representing it by resistance here. Then we have the counter for us to know the number of resistors and then the number of uh, the number of what? Resistors. That is the, the total number of resistors in either para. Good. So we see C out, enter, uh, C out, how many uh, resistors are connected in para. So we use this one to pick the number of resistors in para. Then we say if we want to check if the person entered a number that is uh, more than uh, added, that is greater than one because if you are saying there are zero resistors, there's no need to waste our time. So um, we check if um, the number of resistors is less or equal to zero, then the value entered is wrong. Else, so here we use the if that we have learned the decision statement. So first we check if the value entered is less or equal to what zero so if it is true we'll tell the person that what the person entered for us is wrong but if it is um higher than zero then we'll come here while counter is less than what the total number of resistors so counter here we say counter is equal to what one remember so while one is less than whatever resistance the person gave us see out enter the value of resistor counter so counter be one so here will be enter the value of resistor one so you enter it, then we use the c in to pick the value the value of the resistor then we say rt is equal to what rt plus one over r if I remember that the formula was one over r1 so one over r1 plus what one over what r2 so here we are taking the reciprocal so this portion is representing one over what the resistance here then so um, we use the while loop to take all the value of resistance that the person is entering and then we find the reciprocal of it and add it to the total resistance. So when we are done, we find the reciprocal of the total resistance. Remember that um, the formula is R1, R1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 is equal to 1 over what R over T. So when you are done, you have to find the uh, reciprocal of the summation of this that will give you this one the actual value of the total resistance so here we see the total resistance r is um, total resistance that is uh, the unit is ohms and we have the system pulse as i've explained in the previous what, video right okay so when i run this i try with uh, three resistors in para so the first one was six the second one was 12 and this one was two and this is the total resistance i hope you are following it that's good so let's see example four so write a c plus plus program to find the average of n numbers you see the first one i did was uh remember the first example was to find the sum of um five numbers but um we we are finding the sum of n numbers we don't know the num uh, the number of uh, the, 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 the 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 total numbers that the person want to find the average so we are writing a loop that will pick all the numbers 
though we don't know whether the person is going to enter five numbers, 20 numbers, 100 numbers, billion numbers, whatever. So we are doing this simple thing here. So what we're doing is that we declare the numbers as X floats. We declare the numbers as X and then um, we use what a counter to count the numbers that the person is entering because it's average, you know, average is sum over what the total number of numbers, the total numbers, that's N, remember that. So here we have the flute that is going to do the sum. Then we write out C out, uh, please enter some integers. So the integers the person is going to enter, whether from, uh, though we say integers by declare flute because somebody might enter maybe 1.5, you're right, you know. So the numbers that a person have that he want to sum them. So he entered them. Then this um, slash N here is telling the system to come to the new line before it prints this portion. Yeah. So now while uh, C in X, we pick the value of X while the person entry we are picking. Now, so we what, what, what is happening here is that we want to terminate when a person enter a letter. So we don't know the number the, the the number of the series the the n numbers that the person entering but as long as he's entering figures we'll be summing them until we see a number that is not a figure so if the if he has 20 numbers we say you should enter the 20 numbers and you should enter any letter in addition to the 20 that the letter should be the last right good so we say c in x while we see in the value of x we sum it and then we count the total numbers that he's entering. And when we finish, we say the average of the numbers is equal to what? Sum divided by what? Count. Remember that count has count for us to know the numbers that he deal with. And then we end line. We return zero. I hope these uh, four examples on the while loop will give you better understanding. So let's see the do while. You know, unlike the while loop, the do while, uh, in fact, at least we we'll execute once before it goes and check the condition so remember that we, i said that the while loop will check the condition first before it does the execution of the loop body but with a do while it will do at least one it will execute the loop one before it goes to check whether the condition is true or false so let's see what happens so if look at how the do while goes so do it goes and do the block whatever code here goes and executes the block come and check the condition so if the condition is true it goes on to execute the block but if the condition is false it leaves what the loop so at least the code is executed once so let's see the syntax what is the syntax here the syntax is what the keyword is what do d o do open a curly bracket a close curly bracket here and your statement Remember, I said these statements can be one, it can be two, any number at all. Then we have while the condition that you are checking. So let's see an example here. We have uh, int a equal 10. Then we say do, C out, the value of a equals a. A is equal to a plus one, while a is less than what? 20. So it's going to print 10. Increase A by 1 and check whether the value is less than 20. Go back and print like that. Until A is no more less than 20. So if you run this one, this will be the output. I hope you have enjoyed yourself with this example. And as I've always been saying, subscribe to our channel for more videos, more lecture notes and more programming courses. And as I've said, after the C++, we'll be looking at um, artificial intelligence uh, programming uh, with Python. We'll be looking at data analytics with Python. So I hope that it will be a blessing to you. Thank you and see you and God bless you for watching. Bye-bye.